Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to a brand new video, and we're back again with another F1 2020 game experiment, and we're continuing the trend, giving teams far too many R&D points that they maybe don't deserve in some instances, and we're here today giving Williams 1 million R&D points and seeing what happens, how long it takes to max out this car. Now, this is a bit of a different situation to the My Team car, of course. In F1 2020, things are a little bit different in career mode when you play normal driver career mode when you actually drive for an actual official formula one team you do not get to choose how your hq is upgraded so we've got spec level one for aero chassis and engine and it's up to the ai of williams to decide when they want to upgrade so as we start to spend our one million r d points you can see we're going to buy every single upgrade that's available to us on every part of the r d tree we are going to get bottlenecked pretty much of when the ai team decide to upgrade their facility. So this is why this year's game. It's going to be quite intriguing to see how long it actually takes each team to max out the car, but that is the end goal. So at the end of this video, we will be driving hopefully a maxed out Williams car and seeing how it feels, you know, feeling-wise compared to the My Team car, but then also the actual numerical value on the chart on the R&D graph, but we obviously know that doesn't really equate to how good it is in reality sometimes, and I have a feeling that a lot of these cars may feel better than the My Team car, because the My Team car is an FOM kind of generic car, so no matter how many upgrades you give it, I feel like maybe some of the F1 cars will feel much better inherently because they start off as better cars. Maybe not the Williams one, because the Williams, obviously, as we know, uh, actually ends up starting off as wor worse than the My Team car a lot of the times when you start your My Team career mode. But we go on through the kind of usual sequence then. It's actually the first time I've actually ever shown any gameplay of this uh, driver career mode, as it were, on the channel, because we've been doing My Team the entire time. But it's pretty much the same sort of, you know, menu system as my team, apart from uh, you kind of get locked off on the on the HQ side of things, and we just get to see basically what the AI, uh, you know, in the background is doing. I, I, I guess they kind of just look at where you are, where the team is, how your performances have been doing, I think. That's how they kind of calculate when the AI team is going to upgrade your HQ facility. So it pretty much is not in your hands. It's kind of a bit of potluck. Yes, I guess you could maybe try and do some good performances and show the team you're worthwhile investing in, in terms of the HQs, but it really is going to be a lot of potluck. In the version of this video where we try to max out the My Team car, it took what, like five, six races? <laughs> like, we got to the French Grand Prix eventually round 10, and that's where we had a fully maxed out car, but we're already, you know, the, the best team on the grid by round six. I think this time it may take a lot longer. But anyway, as we progress on to the race weekend for the Australian Grand Prix during pre-season, doing a lot of upgrades, as many as we can, really, to try and close the gap up to Haas, at least. So by the time we get to Melbourne on the R&D graph, you can see we're pretty much level pegging with Haas, but that still will mean we're going to be last place. We're going to obviously simulate every single race and we'll see where the kind of computer feels like the car should be based on the actual performance of the R&D. So we're last and, and second last there. George Russell, my teammate, in last place. So obviously we're trying to aim to try and get a 1-2 eventually uh, with the team. On this year's game, though, I think it will be a little bit easier, maybe, than in previous years and uh, compared to the simulation times, because on this year's game, I feel like the simulations don't try and force you to drive. Like, they're actually pretty accurate, good simulations of the race. So, in that kind of regard, compared to the previous years, where we've had to really get the car so much better than Mercedes, Ferrari, and Red Bull to finally get the simulation to give us a 1-2, we may get that a little bit sooner, but the actual maxing out the car may take a long time because we might just get bottlenecked by the team not upgrading the HQ facilities. So fast forward a few rounds then towards the Chinese Grand Prix. We've done a, a few more upgrades. Of course, the morale is actually a little bit low on every department, which is a little bit worrying for us, but we're now ahead of Haas. And on the right-hand side, you can see the potential of where we are going to be once these upgrades come in. Should be pretty much level taken with Renault. So already, maybe, once the upgrades come in, looking to be a midfield team, we've already started to move up the order now. P16 on the simulation, Russell P19. So it's a slow and steady improvement there. But we're now just going to fast forward through the next kind of bit of the career mode sequence activity timeline uh, towards the Dutch Grand Prix. A lot of upgrades come in for the team. We're still only spec one on every department, but that's fine right now because we've still got plenty of upgrades to go. We're not going to be bottlenecked anytime soon. And so by the time we get towards the Dutch GP, we're now fully in the midfield fight there. We've overtaken Alfa Tauri, overtaken Alfa Romeo, and we're pretty much just there with Renault, as I said. And 
and McLaren and Racing Point, their AI teams haven't really upgraded that much. So actually, we could overtake all three of those teams and be the top of the midfield. Pretty much in the next episode as episode or two, we're still yet to score any points. The Dutch GP, we got pretty close in the simulation time. We got P11, so you can see we're on the cusp of being right there, according to the AI. And as I said, in the next race or two, we're going to continue to upgrade the car, purchasing some major upgrades now as we get kind of get past the kind of first iteration of all the miners and now getting to the real kind of hefty upgrades. They do take some time though as well, and that's the thing. Obviously, build time is part of the HQ now, unlike last year where we could purchase build time and reduce it. So it really is a slow process because my team aren't upgrading the facilities enough for the build time to go down. So it's taken a while, but we get to the Monaco Grand Prix and now we are top of the midfield and we are scoring points now in this season from uh, what was last place pretty much the Monaco Grand Prix. The simulation puts us up to P7. So impressive, but remember this, at uh, this point in the My Team version, of this entire experiment, we were going from last place to first place already. So you can see the difference there, but we're, we're not lagging behind exactly. It was only uh, seven slots behind. And to be fair, either way, from in, at Monaco, for the game to say, yeah, one of the most difficult places to overtake, we're last place or near the back in a Williams car, and we're going to go up to seventh place. I think it's still pretty good and showing the car is very much improving a fair bit. We're kind of maybe fourth best on every single uh, kind of count on the engine, chassis, and aero side. So we continue now to fast forward through this season, upgrading as much as we can. We're now getting through to some ultimate upgrades on the chassis side of things. Still not there with the uh, aero. There's no ultimate upgrades for the engine side, at least that I can see right now. There's a few, obviously, that are not unlocked yet due to the HU upgrades, but might make sense because obviously we've got the Mercedes engine, so the best engine on the grid may not necessarily have that. It's kind of that kind of whole thing of diminished returns, which is good to see because I think that may be may probably is the same thing for Mercedes and obviously you would hope Red Bull and Ferrari to allow the kind of midfield to kind of close up there to try and create an interesting kind of game in multiple seasons. But we've now established Williams as a midfield team scoring points regularly. A lot of P7s here. Russell in P10. So that's pretty much the pattern as we move on. But now we are getting to the point where we're getting a bottleneck. So at this stage the Williams AI team have upgraded our facilities the HQ to spec 2 on the uh, uh, on everything. Chassis, engine, aero, even the uh, even the durability as well which uh, obviously we, we're going to upgrade as well to fully max out everything. But now we're pretty much there. We're like at the end level. We're at the two last tiers or kind of slices, if you were, kind of trying to uh, describe it the best way I can, of the tree. And now you've got those question mark bubbles of the upgrades. We can't do them until we get spec three. But we're getting very close to that bottleneck. And we're also getting to the point where we're nearing becoming one of the best teams on the grid. We're now beating the likes of Mercedes and Red Bull, the Hungarian Grand Prix ahead of Bottas and Verstappen there. So we're slowly but surely getting to the point where we are going to be the best team on the grid as we fast forward through last few upgrades before the Belgium Grand Prix and also purchasing a few more. We're now going to be just off the podium in P4 in what was, I think it was a wet race here for the Belgium Grand Prix simulation. We've now also got a team of Alexander Albon as well, you may have noticed. Russell is out. The contract period came and went and our team felt we needed a better teammate. So Albon has been purchased as a teammate for us. Obviously, that wasn't our decision. That was the AI's decision. Uh, we continue now to make more upgrades then. And we're pretty much now, we are actually at the end of the durability part of the tree. The engine side of the tree. And we are pending on being right at the end of the chassis. Because we've got one uh, upgrade on the aero and two pending upgrades on the chassis. And then that will be it. We are going to be bottlenecked. And we are just waiting then, like a lemming, waiting for Williams to upgrade the HQs. But... I mean, is there any point? Will the AI team even do that? Because if we're the best team on the grid already, the AI may just think there's no point upgrading these HQ facilities, is there? And into Singapore, we are now very much the best team on the grid, getting a 1-2 at the Singapore Grand Prix. An R&D reset comes through, but of course that's no bother for us. We've got, you know, so we're not even made a dent in that 1 million R&D points on the top right. So the R&D regulation change comes and goes. We're going to obviously just adapt every single part. It was the, uh, I believe it was the engine side and the uh, durability. So we just adapt everything. But as we move on into the countdown for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, 
we have some updates on the facilities, but none of them are going to make them Spec 3 facilities, which is very frustrating. You've got Fabrication Spec 2, but it doesn't even matter when we've already maxed out all the upgrades. Uh, so going into Abu Dhabi, another one to uh, Yasmin Marina, no surprise. In terms of the R&D graph, you can see we are a fair amount ahead, but you can see when we started to kind of plateau and get bottlenecked by the HQ, we're about maybe, I would say, one field spread ahead. So the gap from Mercedes to Haas, we're probably just about that much quicker than Mercedes. Um, but obviously, there's still plenty to go. There's still a whole extra layer or two of upgrades on the engine, aero, and chassis side. And even the durability as well is being bottlenecked, as that's even on, only on spec two. So at this stage for me, whilst I was doing the recording uh, of this experiment, I kind of got worried. I thought, is the team ever going to upgrade? Like, are they ever going to do it? Because, as I said, if, if, we're, if we're the best team, is there really any point to upgrading the HQ facilities in their mind? In this instance, in this Williams save. Uh, and that's exactly what happens. Uh, we go into a second season, this is. We go towards a new season. Throughout the entire winter break to the end of the season, nothing comes for the team. We re-sign, obviously, our contract. We see Emma, our agent, for the first time ever in the game in a long while, obviously, because we don't really see her that often, or at all, really, actually the my team crew and actually to think about it but we come through into a new season uh pre-season comes and goes and nothing's coming the the, te the ai team williams they just don't want to upgrade the facilities and i'm going to spare you guys with the boredom but just know i had to sit through an entire season of career mode season two going to every single grand prix clicking all the buttons to go through the menu simulating every race because the team just refused to upgrade the HQ facilities. We go through an entire season, only like halfway through, I think it was the season, did they upgrade to Spec 3 durability. Durability. So we got to upgrade the durability throughout the season, but that had no, obviously, bearing on the performance of the car. And so we get through all the way to Abu Dhabi of season two, and we're still in the same place. And only now do we get fabrication Spec 3 on the chassis HQ. So it took a whole season Season for Williams to think, oh, you know what, maybe we should upgrade the facilities and uh, try and push on and try and get that maxed out car. So now we can upgrade the final bits on the chassis side of the tree. Still yet to get the aero and engine side, by the way. We go to Abu Dhabi. Ironically, we're not even 1-2 at Abu Dhabi, so there's actually cause to upgrade. So maybe that's why Williams finally decided to upgrade the facilities, because we didn't uh, end up 1-2 at Abu Dhabi. Our teammate now is, uh, if you've noticed, Max Verstappen. Uh, he's going to win the driver's championship, of course, because the simulation will always favour the teammate, especially if it's going to be uh, uh, Max Body Verstappen. But we move into Season 3, then re-sign our contract yet again. And then finally... Finally, after like a good, I think it was like over an hour or so of me having to go through season two simulating it all, we finally get the spec three upgrades we've been looking for on the aero and the chassis and the engine. And now we can purchase those final upgrades on the R&D tree. The engine side in the end is actually three Ultima upgrades of so their three pretty beefy upgrades on the engine side of things. The chassis is also going to be some ultimate upgrades on the front and rear downforce, and the chassis is going to be the weight redistribution and the brakes and such, and Tyra as well. We wait for those to come in. It takes a little bit of a while. In this third season, I've opted to do a 10-race shortened calendar, just to give me a bit of strength in terms of simulating it all. So we come through to the Vietnam Grand Prix. The engine upgrades are finished. The chassis ones are done. The aero was a bit tricky because the Williams tree has has one uh, central pillar and then it has the final two ultimate upgrades so those did take a little bit longer so it takes us till the Dutch Grand Prix but finally we're there at Zandvoort season three we've got spec three facilities on the aero chassis powertrain and durability and also apparently I saw in the background your AI team still upgrades personnel and marketing but you don't get to see it ever in the menus but it's floating around in the background which I thought was quite interesting so I don't know if that has any bearing on how far they actually upgrade and how the team acclaim is or whatever. We don't see any of that in the driver career. But there we are then. A maxed out Williams car and R&D tree. Uh, you can see uh, a bit of a piss take of how long it took, uh, you know, in terms of we go back and scroll
Stroll to Season 1. You can see the rapid upgrading to the Spanish Grand Prix, and then just a big old plateau in Season 2, and then finally some movement in Season 3 to get up and max out the car. If we just pause it here, though, and have a look at the R&D tree and compare it to the My Team one, because I think it's be quite interesting, because, of course, that's a such a unique thing on this year's game, having that FOM car. You can see the chassis side is quite similar, actually, uh, uh, on, on the right-hand side. Durability the exact same as it probably would be for every single team. Aero-wise... There's actually, it looks it looks like a bit top heavy for the My Team car versus Williams is a bit more stretched out. And then engine wise, there's a lot more to do in the My Team car and it, a lot more early on, obviously, compared to, to, to Williams with the, the Mercedes engine. But as I said, I, I, I think, I'm pretty sure the tree doesn't change if you change engine in My Team, which I think is a mistake. So that's unfortunate to not have that kind of reflected in the My Team car if you were to have the Mercedes engine, but that's just the way they had to go with it with the FOM car, I guess. But um, if we compare where the Williams Max is out to, it's just over 900. I'd say maybe 910 on the performance index of the R&D graph. And we go back to the My Team experiment we did with the maxed out car. The My Team car maxes out to just under 1,100. So the maxed out Williams car, numerically, is a lot worse than the My Team car. And I probably will think you'll actually feel a lot worse out on track. But that's what we're going to do. On that note, we're going to go now into the Canadian Grand Prix and actually see how this car drives. Well, I'm actually shocked. That's like a whole 200 index points less than the maxed up my team car. And 200 points on the, on, on the index there. You know, you're talking about pretty much the whole field spread that we've got right now in this current game save of this Williams experiment we're doing. Like 200 more than covers the entire field spread of Ferrari down to Haas here. So that's a big deal. That's a lot worse. So they've really done Williams dirty. I'm sure they've also done every other team dirty. It seems like on this year's game, maybe it's more staggered because in last year's game, you had quite a few teams, about five teams, could pretty much get to the same max potential. But now it may seem like it's staggered. It's something we're going to have to maybe look into as we try and max out other teams, obviously. So do let me know in the comments below what team you want to see me max out next in F120. 2020 career mode, but let's get into this then. Let's see how this Williams car drives in a five lap race from nearly last place on the grid and see how quickly we can get up the order. I say nearly last place because we had a uh, Kafiat AI with a, a grid penalty of some sort, so he's actually in P20. We're here, we are P19 to five red lights to an overcast Canadian Grand Prix, and we're underway off the five red lights. Very quick, actually. I was surprised how much we jumped up the order. I didn't feel like we actually jumped up off the lights that quickly with the My Team car into turn one, trying to navigate. Obviously, quite a tight circuit uh, in these first few corners, just trying to find some space around the outside then of Russell, our old teammate, who's now in Haas. Perez and Ocon fighting side by side under the chicane up ahead of us, so we have to be a little bit careful here, but uh, kind of odd to see Ocon back in the racing point car in this uh, career mode save ours in Perez and Alfa Romeo, but trying to go around the outside, and I've got to be honest, already at this stage of lap one, I could tell this is not this is not the same gravy as the my team max out car. It didn't feel like I had utter dominance over these guys. I actually felt like I actually still had to push quite hard. Like, you know, in the last two games, in F1 2018 and 19, every time we maxed out a Williams or any car, it always felt god tier. Like, it always felt like I was playing on, like, AI zero, and we could dive down the inside, go around the outside of everyone, anywhere. But here... You know, yeah, we made a massive dive bomb there into the hairpin. We got two places in one. That's fine. And in a straight line, you can see against Gasly here now for Tauri. We're going to steam past him under braking, get the job done. P11 by the end of lap one. So it's, it is good progress. It is. But the actual feeling of the car was not that great. It felt just like a Williams car. On, in, in all honesty, it felt like a Williams car with a, a little bit more grip mid-corner and definitely more straight line speed. But it didn't feel like it was stuck to the ground, like on rails, like a lot of the max that cars felt like on F1 2019. And to be fair, the My Team car, I kind of said this almost in, in the video we did, it didn't, you know, I felt like I couldn't extract the maximum out of the max that My Team car. Leclerc did, uh, the, our, our AI team at the time, obviously, he was like a good, a second or faster than me, so... Maybe it's just a case of I still have to try and, you know, really extract the max out of these really good cars. But this Williams just... It just did not feel the same. It just did not feel that great. We go down the inside of Norris, but it took me almost a whole lap 
to catch up to Lando Norris in the McLaren car. I think what's happened here is because of that season two where the Williams team just didn't allow me to upgrade. We plateaued the entire time. It allowed all the others to get better. So if we compare this experiment to last season's experiment with the Williams car, the grid is a lot closer to this Williams than they were on F1 2019. So that's also maybe why it doesn't feel as god tier as possible. I feel like, you know, on last year's game, I would have gone around the outside of that of this Renault. Instead, I'm stuck behind DeFries. Uh, I try to go down the inside, and he just defends really well. Maybe it's also, you know, maybe showcases the AI are much better on this year's game. I don't know. But the Williams guy definitely didn't feel as good as I thought it would be. Um, but why should we be surprised? It's a whole 200 index points lower than the max out my team car. So we really shouldn't be surprised. And it's going to take a whole lap for us to even overtake the Renault. Like you saw there, rear end stepped out. It doesn't look that great versus the Renault. The Renault genuinely looks faster than me right now through all these corners because the car just doesn't have that supreme grip. On the exit of the hairpin, hopefully going to get that uh, down the power and use ERS uh, and DRS to get past him. But, you know, you'd expect that in any kind of situation to use ERS and DRS and Rich Mix to get past the car in a straight line. You, you know, you don't need a maxed out car for that. So we get past him, nothing spectacular. We're up into P9, but we've got uh, only two laps to go now. It's lap number four. We've set a purple R sector, red first and second. So it really hasn't been a great time in this race. Could we even get signed? It took us a whole lap to catch up to Norris. Uh, same thing for the Renault. So could we get signed by the end of lap four? That means by the end of lap five, you know, we'll be around P7 which is abysmal, really, if you think about it. It's a maxed out car, and we're going to be P7 in this race, maybe, because even Verstappen is not that far ahead. Here's a replay of, I think, Verstappen on lap number two, this was, and he's in the K... And he's in the same camera shot as the Ferrari or Vettel there in second place. Usually, the, the our teammate who starts in first place, he's like in another universe. He's like a half a lap or even a lap ahead at this point. But he's in the same camera shot. He's only within like two, three seconds of the Ferrari car. So, yeah, the Williams maxed out car. Big letdown. Really big letdown. Maybe in a way that's more realistic. Maybe the last two games where we've been maxing out cars, maybe that's quite unrealistic. Because you would think, you know, obviously, yes... Uh, every team could, you know, make a car that good in theory, but you've got to take into the real life account, you know, Williams don't have the, the same facilities and potential maybe as a Mercedes and Red Bull. So if you did give them the same money that maybe Mercedes have, would they really make the same car? I, I don't know. That's the I, Those are the questions you kind of leave with. Uh, from this experiment kind of almost like a real-life scientific experiment, you know if I do a dissertation paper There are you know, there's questions at the end and there's further work and future work You're gonna suggest people to do so it's one of those things where it just leaves a question mark of is this realistic or Is it a little bit just uh, a little bit naff to not to not be able to max out cars because you know Let's say one of you guys if you played normal driver career mode uh, You know if you got bored of my team or whatever and you started playing with Williams and you wanted to try and do a road to glory yeah, actually, good point. If I wanted to do a Road to Glory with Williams, and it took me three seasons, like it did when we did the Road to Glory series just gone by, I would be severely pissed off and irked that I couldn't max this car out to the same potential. Because if you played it long enough, the AI teams around me, Mercedes, Red Bull, Ferrari, they could probably eventually max out their cars, and I'm assuming they would go higher than us. So you'd you wouldn't you'd be stuck. You'd be bottlenecked by your own uh, your own team of how well you can do in a, in a season. So that was the five lap race. We only got P8, so very underwhelming. We didn't even get into second place. That's usually the aim, you know. Our teammate gallivants off in the distance because he's in a maxed out car on pole. And we get second place in five laps. But this is the first time ever in an experiment of this kind where we've maxed out a car with more than 1 million R&D points that we've not got to second place in one of these little test races. So there you have it. Maybe this year's game is different. And maybe this means for the first time on, on an F1 game, maybe I need to actually go through every single team. Uh, and max it out because so far on F1 2019 I think we got through five different cars trying to find the highest potential max car But on this year's game Maybe I should try and go through every single team just to give us a nice kind of illustration picture of where every single team maxes out That seems like something interesting for you guys to see then let me know in the comments below and maybe I don't know We do this as a weekly thing like maybe every Thursday or every midweek I max out another car in career mode on F1 2020 and eventually in 10 weeks time 
will see a good picture of where every car maxes out. So it might give you guys some inkling of what team to choose if you want to try and do a driver career mode. And it just may be quite intriguing to see how Code Masters have coded the game in terms of the, the highest potentials for each uh, AI team. But that has been this experiment video, giving 1 million R&D points to Williams and seeing what a maxed out car looks like in this team. And as I said, the word, I think the entire word to encompass this entire team maxed out is underwhelming. So nonetheless, if you did find the video interesting at least, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I've been Aaron for I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.